Hi, my name is Beth Hiley, here for Board Game Geek at Origins 2017. I'm sitting down with Elena Christensen from Asthma Day North America and eagerly awaited. This is the first expansion. There's a lot of hype. Right, there's a lot of hype. So I'm sure everyone at this point, I hope, has played and tried Splendor. Yeah. And this is uh, Cities of Splendor. Yeah, Cities of Splendor. Um, you say expansion, um, you'll see on the box it says expansions because there are actually four expansions in this game. Um, which is really exciting, really fun. Um, I worked the info booth at Asmodee last year and we had people coming up being like, do you guys have, you know, anything in the works? I'm like, I, I don't know, maybe. <laughs> maybe. Maybe. <laughs> um, we've got four things in the works. So um, in this one box, you'll find four completely independent um, expansions. Um, and you can see all of them here. So this is kind of everything that comes with it. And each of these things adds something distinct, distinctly new to the game of Splendor um, while still keeping the spirit of the game. And is it, before we kind of get into yeah. what each of those flavors are, is this one of those where you would pick one of those or can you mix and match any combination as, as you, you choose? You would pick one. Um, they do change um, the victory condition. One of them changes the victory condition entirely. Um, some of them, they add different things. They add different complexity. Um, so our recommendation is to use them all entirely separately. But, you know, when you're at home and you want to try something new, go nuts. Doesn't hurt to try. All right, let's dive in. Number one. All right, number one, uh, first thing we're going to talk about probably is cities. So uh, these are cities. Uh, they replace your nobles in the game. So rather than having nobles, you're going to have uh, these cities up there, and you claim them sort of like nobles, um, but they do function as a new win condition. So instead of reaching your normal number of points, um, you're going for a number of points as well as a certain um, number of cards in your pool. Um, so instead of just, you know, when you get a noble, you place, you know, you have so many, you know, you have three reds, three greens, and three blues, or whatever the noble requires, um, and you just get that noble for a few extra points. These cities instead require you to have a similar element you know, down here, three whites, three blues, three reds, three blacks, and 11 points. So say I've accomplished that in the game, um, I have all of those cards in front of me, at, and then at the end of my turn, I claim this. So nobody else can claim it. Um, in this game, first player is very important, uh, so they have also given us a first player token. So, I have the first player token, I grab this, you can no longer take it. But you can take any of these other cities if you fit, if you, uh, yes, if you match their requirements. Um, cities at the end of the round, so we've played around, I've claimed this, we've played around, and I'm the only person who's claimed a city, I win the game. Um, <laughs> but if two people have claimed a city, then we have to keep going and, um, until you've claimed two. Um, so, uh, that's the city's expansion. It, it changes the game just a little bit, um, but in a really interesting way. And, and it's, a, it's a, similar to the Nobles where you can see multiple people going for the same thing, but the stakes are a little bit higher. All right, number two. Number two. Let's talk about that trading post we pulled away. Uh, this is a trading post and it definitely expands the engine building function of the game. Um, so you, you have your own little area here and you can expand its capabilities by working in the trading post. Um, so this again, you have a certain number of cards in front of you, you have three red cards, one white, and uh, if I am the blue character, I can put one of my shields uh, on its little space here, and then I have a new ability. Um, so for example, uh, this one, if you, you know, on your turn you can take one, three different colors or two of the same. When you take two of the same, this one allows you to take an additional one that is not the same. Correct. Mm -hmm. um, this one, your gold token counts for two wow. light colors rather than just one. Um, so these kind of all do different things and you are able to gain those abilities as you go when you are able to put these out there. So um, as you go throughout the game, you kind of get these new things that you can do that you can be able to in Splendor. Now are these are these in order? Is this a sequence you have to build no. from left to right? No. Or is it no. at, whenever you yep. qualify, whenever if you I, I come in here with three blacks and now each of my requirements, each of my little shields up here is yep. also worth victory points. And so this is really different too from Nobles or anything like that because it does allow everyone to do it. Like there's no, I got here first so you can't. Um, you know, I can get this one and then you can get it the next turn and then we both have that ability. But it can give you a bit of a step up. Um, and gives you other reasons to maybe go after certain colors rather than just what's out there on the board. 
helpful in a way if the cards just didn't fall your way, which I know has been a feeling some people struggle with. It's like, you know, we're obviously both going for the same noble, but I'm later than you in turn order, and I yep. always feel step behind. You could mitigate yes. that by focusing more on this. Yes, and it, because it has so many different things that it allows you to do, it gives different players, it, it's almost like having character cards at a certain point because it gives different players these different abilities, and mine might be so different from yours, which then allows us to take a similar path but in a different way, because um, I can do this and you can't, but you can do something else that I can't. Right. So that is the trading post. Um, number three. Out there. Number three is Strongholds. I just played this one this week, and it was the most frustrating but wonderful <laughs> game experience of my life, <laughs> because it adds this amazing competitive element that um, a lot of people use uh, reserving cards in Splendor for, but this uh, this expands that even further um, because you have three strongholds, and so when you are when you have the cards out and you claim one, you can put down a stronghold to cover a card. So if this was just a card from the game, you cover a card, and then nobody else can claim that except for you. One of your other options when you buy a card is to remove somebody else's stronghold. Ah. So I can put this down, and then my opponent on the next turn can take it assuming they're able to buy a card. So purchasing, it's another one that gives you some incentive to purchase a card, even if it's not necessarily what you need. Um, it can make the game take a little bit longer because you're sort of fighting over mm -hmm. these A little cards. bit more tit for tat. <laughs> yeah, a little pull and push. And so in in this game that I played this week, I kept putting down my stronghold and my opponent kept taking it off and I kept putting it back on and they kept taking it off. And we were just like fighting over this, you know, playing tug of war over this one card. Um, and the rest just went unnoticed. We're both just like, Arr! because we both wanted did, the I was going to say, did somebody them. not the two of you win? Uh, it mean... was just the two of us. Oh, it was a right. two-person <laughs> game. Um, and I think he won, unfortunately, because at a certain point I was so focused and he sort of moved on and I was just like, now I need that card because we fought about it. <laughs> so I eventually Stinker got my card play. and he won anyway, so it was fine. <laughs> um, but that Strongholds uh, adds a little bit of... Uh, a little bit of sabotage in there, it's kind of fun. So the last one is the Orient. So this is a whole new set of cards. So look at the, uh, yeah. All right, we'll just put out some examples here. Yeah. So it looks like you guys contracted to the same artist who did uh, the you original card design for the base game. Yep, so you'll see, these are Orient cards, and you'll see on the back they have these sort of like little dots and that indicates the row. So in a game of, um, I can actually show you how this functions um, on the rules. So you'll see that you lay out your normal cards. Um, you lay out your normal cards the way you would in a standard game of Splendor, but then you have these Orient cards which create this sort of extra set, and these are other cards that you can gain that sort of like the trading post give you new abilities, and um, these cards serve differently. Um, so, you know, you'll see on this, this counts as two gold tokens, which can be very powerful. There's right. a lot of buying power throughout the game. Um, this little bag sort of functions as a bonus. So when you have um, a green card in front of you and then you put that on top of it, you have now two green cards. It functions sort of like a wild card. Um, and then you attach it to that card for the rest of the game. Uh, so these are all, you know, level one cards, but then you get into the level twos and they offer sort of new abilities. Um, and all right, so we've got some double gem cards. Yeah, That's double fun. gems. Another. Um, this one allows you to just claim a level one card just off the bat. So you take this card, and then I also want that other card. Um, and those can be either from the standard set of cards or from the Orient. So then you could gain, you know, this and then take that. All right, we got one involving powers with nobles, mm -hmm. and so that allows you to claim a noble like you would a card to reserve. A noble. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. <laughs> That's so you can fun. say that is my noble. <laughs> huh. um, so that adds another little bit of sabotage, and they're like, oh, I see you're going for that noble. No, you're not. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, uh, let's, let's look at a couple examples of uh, yep, level so three level here. Three, uh, much like this one allows you to take a level one card, these two dots allow you to take a level two, two card. So these nope. can get <laughs> super powerful. This requires you to discard two red cards in order to take it. Wow. So that's changing the game a little too. What you used to have, you may not anymore, but now you have three points. Um, so, 
when you're playing the game, you sort of build up all of these low-level cards that don't necessarily have point values. Eventually, you don't need them anymore, so you can trade them out. Or you do need them, and you have to make that tough decision. Do I want that buying power more, or do I want these three cards? Which, for a level three card, would be relatively easy to accomplish. Yeah. Which is not true for a lot of the other ones. Right, and when you get to the level three cards, too, um, in, the, in the normal game, there's so many. It can be, like, five white, and then two black, and then, like, three red, and that's a lot of cards and gems to get. You may not quite have that. It takes a while to get there. This allows you to get some of those points a little bit easier while sacrificing some of your buying power down the line. So you have to make some, some choices in this game. Well, now that we've really whetted everybody's appetite, <laughs> let's talk about when people are going to be able to get their hands on this, because I know this is eagerly awaited. It's a little bit later. We're tar our target is a little later in the summer, so hopefully very soon. Maybe get your hands on it before you head back to school for your, you know, uh, your Labor Day weekend or whatever. So um, we are really excited to get this into people's hands. Um, as you can see, it adds a ton to the game um, in a lot of different ways. So that's, you know, people play Splendor over and over and over and over again. This allows you to play it over and over and over and over and over again <laughs> because you get to add something new and you make it a new but still familiar game experience, which has been really fun. Yeah. So, well, Lena, I, that is really going to get people chomping at the bit to, I think, play some more Splendor. Yeah. If you guys are interested, this is the first expansion, which is called Cities of Splendor, which is uh, Space Cowboys, as the day. Yep. And thank you for letting us take a look. Thanks so much for having me.